We've finished adding the main features for our application, but one thing that really bothers me is that whenever we add something new, we come into this dependency injection setup, and just looking at it, it's kind of a mess. We have everything cluttered in here, we got all these callbacks, and it's not very easy to read, it's disorganized. So that's one thing I want to do, is clean this up a little bit. So the way I usually clean up all this is by using extension methods. So what I'm going to do is in my project, add a new folder here. And these are going to be extensions for my host builder. So I'm going to call this host builders. And basically all of this configuration is going to be split into separate extension methods. And these extension methods are going to fluently extend the host builder. So configuring this is going to look very clean. And we'll see how that looks in action. But let's begin by creating our first extension method. So I'm going to create a class for each extension method to keep things organized. Now the first extension method I want is something to do all of this configuration that we have right here. So I'm going to call this the add configuration host builder extensions. And this needs to be static because it's going to hold extension methods. So extension methods very easy to set up. They have to be static as well. This is going to return the host builder and that's going to allow us to configure the host builder fluently. So let's import that and I'll call this add configuration and it's going to be an extension method for the host builder so we use this and then the type we want to extend, the host builder, and we'll just call it host. And now let's grab our configuration, all of that logic, and move it into our extension method. So paste that in there, and we're going to configure the host. We're going to have to import these methods as well. There we go. So we do the configuration, and then we simply return the host so we can fluently chain another extension method. So back in our app.xam.cs, we create the iHost builder right here. And now let's use our extension method add configuration and import that so it'll call this method do the configuration return the host and then we continue to configure our host builder so as you can see already a bit cleaner so let's begin organizing all of this and how you organize this is really personal preference but one extension method I'm gonna have is adding the DB context configuration so let's add another extension method class here I call this add DB context host builder extensions make this static again get our extension method going in here for add db context mark it as an extension method for the host builder and import everything and now in my app.xaml.cs I'm gonna grab all of this I suppose so let's do that and paste that in there make sure we chain that to the host and now I'm gonna get rid of all of this finance API stuff because I don't feel like that's part of adding a db context configuration so let's get rid of that so now this is strictly for our db context Let's clean this up a little bit. We're missing brackets, parentheses, all that. Got to import everything. There we go. Looks good. And last but not least, return the host. So now back in our app.xaml.cs, let's chain this onto our host builder as well. Add DB context. And then we can delete all of that down here in our configure services because the extension method will take care of that for us. I also like to put all of my services into their own extension methods. So let's create one of those. This will be the add services host builder extensions same thing as before getting a little bit repetitive but set up the extension method to add services take in the host builder and we're going to configure services again and then in our app.xaml.cs let's take out all the services and paste those into our add services extension method and make sure we import everything and it is a lot to import actually just doing control dot all day and then return the host and actually the password hasher, I kind of consider that a service as well. So I'm going to move that into the add services extension method as well. And now let's use that extension method to add services. So next up, we are going to add view models. And all of this view model configuration is really complex. Like we have a lot of manual registrations in here, big blocks of code. And this is really why I like to set up the extension methods. So we're going to see how this extension method structure is really going to clean this up. So let's create a new extension method class for that. The add view models, host builder extensions, make it static, get our extension method in here. So now this extension method class is going to be a little bit different, going to be a little bit more advanced. So of course, first thing we want to do is just move everything in there. So let's just cut it out and paste it. And actually, I don't want to paste it yet. Let's first set up our configure services method and then paste it in there. There we go, much better and just go through and import everything and then of course return the host at the end of the method so we could just leave it like this this is perfectly fine but I do not like all of these gigantic blocks of code in the middle of all my registration 
So what I like to do is just extract these to methods. And of course, those methods are going to go down here in our class. And this is where creating separate extension method classes really comes in handy because I wouldn't feel comfortable having a ton of methods at the end of my app.xaml.cs to create some kinds of services. It would just make this entire class way too long, hard to find things, and that's not really the purpose of the app class. All you really want your app class to do is handle starting and stopping the application. So I feel better having this all organized in my extension method classes. So let's pull this to a method. Oh, Visual Studio doesn't like this. It might not know how to do this. It's trying to change all of these other registrations too, so we're not going to do that. Instead, let me just cut this out. So cut it to the clipboard, and we'll generate a method here. We'll call it create home view model. Generate that, and then come down here, and just paste, change this argument to services, and just return the home view model that we want to create. There we go, that looks better. And now up here, we've just moved that code block into its own method. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the login and register view models. They kind of take up a lot of space in here since we do this manual instantiation. So extracting a method still is not going to work for us, unfortunately. So we'll just do it manually. We'll have another static method down here to create the login view model. And we'll call it create login view model. And we'll take in the service provider and just move our login view model instantiation down here into the method. There we go, all good. And now up here, let's actually turn this into a one-liner. So we need a delegate to create a login view model. So let's set up that callback that takes no parameters and will return the login view model that we will create and pass in our services. So there we go, cleaner already. Let's do the same thing for the register view model. Create a method for that to create the register view model. Take in the services and just grab this instantiation, move it into our method and do the same thing as before, make this a one-liner for our create view model delegate. So this is looking good. In fact, I think I'm going to make all of these one-liners too. So just remove the return statement and the code block, and we'll do that for all of these. There's really no reason to open that up in the code blocks anyways, because it's just a one-line function, so we can make it a full one-liner, get a little bit less bloat in here, make it easier to read. That's the whole goal of this organization. So this all looks pretty good. Last thing I'm going to do is just organize these into little groups, put the create view models next to each other, and the view model delegate renavigators next to each other. All right, this looks very clean. So we add all the view models, we add all the create view model delegates, we add our factory, and we add our renavigators. And then we got all the manual instantiations just tucked away down here. So now in our app.xaml.cs, let's add view models. Oh, and we got our poor main view model down here too. Let's move that into the extension method. We forgot about them. And I'm going to go ahead and change this registration to a singleton because there's really no reason to make it scoped in just a regular desktop application. All right, so what is left? Not much. Let's move this into an extension method. And what are those? They are stores. So we will have the add stores host builder extensions. The rest of these are going to be pretty simple. So add stores, take in the host builder, set up our configure services method, return the host, and then move all of this into the extension method and import everything. All right, so let's use that extension method too. And I'm actually going to put it before the view models extension method because I want this just to match the flow of my dependencies. So my view models depend on the stores, the stores depend on the services, the services depend on the DB context. Of course, the order that we register things doesn't really matter. So we have two little groups left. And I think I'm going to put these in the separate extension methods. So this, I consider adding the finance API. So we'll have extension methods for that. Add finance API host builder extensions. I really need a snippet to scaffold all of this out. Let's just cut all of this out, paste it in here, import everything for the millionth time, and return the host. And I'm missing a bracket. Let's add that. And I'll put this extension method just up here. Add the finance API. And now the last extension method will be to add views and that's just going to contain our main window registration so let's get that final extension method in here the add views host builder extensions set up the configure services method return the host and finally go into our app.xaml.cs and cut this final registration out paste it into our extension method import everything and while i'm here i might as well just register this as a singleton as well and there we go we have our configuration all tucked away 
in very organized extension methods. So obviously, same functionality, and really doing all of this kind of is optional. I just like to keep things organized. I think it's easier to read and understand. I suppose one criticism against this is that simply, well, now everything is split up. So in my add view models extension, as you can see in some of these right here, we request an I major index service. And we don't register that in this extension method. We register that in our add services extension method. So we have to make sure it's registered here. So that could be a pain to debug, having to check multiple files and just trying to use these methods on their own. Like if I were to add view models, I wouldn't know that it requires me to add services as well. So kind of an undocumented dependency there. Of course, we could document it at the top of this method. But for the sake of this application, I think we're okay. And really for the sake of organization, I really think this is a good approach to organizing services and host builder configuration. So hopefully you guys find this useful and can apply it to your own applications. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. But other than that, leave a like and stay tuned for more. Thank you.